Ladies and gentlemen, I thought you could use a good laugh. So I thought I would feature this article that we had in our archives uh, predicting an ice age by 2019 because I knew when we got to 2019 there would be no ice age. And this is an article by Ben Hayward who now looks silly, but but he, he's quoting scientists, so we can't blame him for writing this title. The title, you know, the titles that say start out with the word scientists, they're very misleading because it looks like there's consensus. It looks like there's a hundred percent consensus. And it, you're, you're thinking some scientists, all scientists, climate scientists, astronomer scientists, what kind of scientists is he talking about? And basically he's talking about a very few people that uh, were predicting an ice age by 20. 19 and here in 2019 we're sitting on top of record warm oceans we're sitting on top of uh, incredible methane plumes we're sitting on top of mass animal die-offs in fact the animal die-offs have been so prevalent that now they're decreasing because there's no animals left to die off with respect to fish and birds and when you heat your oceans to record levels, your inlets, if they're being heated by the sun, get even warmer than the open ocean. They uh, hold the heat, it's shallower water, less water, and what happens? In Alaska, this is an amazing picture. This is taken by Russian scientists doing surveys in the Arctic. This is a methane plume in action. They said that the sea was boiling and when the Bible talks about boiling seas and and dying fish well there you go you're seeing it play out right before your eyes and I quote the Bible not in an attempt to push the Bible um, I rarely make references to religious texts but they are historical references and revelations when you do your research isn't any miraculous prediction it's simply history predict predicted or projected forward as a cycle so the earth has been through this before and it is now in the midst of going through it again the oceans are boiling now this is a section the whole ocean wasn't doing this. This comes from caltrates and and organisms that uh, populate the sediment layers. And you heat that layer up, the methane expands rapidly. And when that happens, poof, we have plumes. Uh, what a remarkable picture. It's just, it floors me. Uh, we've seen bubbles, methane bubbles, taken photographs of methane bubbles from underwater submarines but that's one of the first surface water pictures we have of a massive bloom in action so record warm oceans explains why they just closed one of the richest and most productive fishing hatcheries in Alaska and no more cod and the salmon are all but gone in fact, globally, the, the salmon have died out. Uh, complete and total collapse of the species. Salmon were very precarious animals because they don't have a lifespan that goes over many, many years. Once they spawn, they die. So they only spawn once. If they die out in your river system before they get a chance to spawn, um, there goes your whole river system and that's what's happening all over the world it's happening in Norway it's happening in Canada it's happening in Alaska it's happening anywhere where they even United Kingdom uh, has problems with their salmon population dying out so let's um, a moment of silence for the richest most productive fish hatchery on the west coast um, they just shut it down
because there's no more fish. And when there's no fish, the birds don't eat, and eventually you find dead birds littering your beach. Not as many as last year. Why? Because most of the birds have died out. So we were seeing increasing numbers of death, uh, numbers of dead birds each and every year. It's starting to fall off now because so many birds have died that there's very few living ones left to die again, you know. So that's an issue. Now, we had we had a volcanic eruption down in New Zealand uh, and it's killed a few people. I don't know why they didn't get a warning. I mean, all volcanoes give warnings. Uh, they have pictures of people hiking down in the actual caldera right before the eruption. And the caldera itself was venting uh, actively. So when you're walking at the bottom of a caldera that's actively venting steam and sulfur dioxide, you're putting your life in the hands of other things. And so our heart goes out to those people that are missing and will never be found. And um, it's, it's a familiar theme, isn't it? We've seen this happen before in Japan. We've seen this happen in Indonesia. We've seen this happen all over the globe where volcanic eruptions are killing people. That's, uh, that's quite unusual. Earth used to average about 60 eruptions a year. Now in a 40, in a 60 day span, you'll have 60 eruptions. So in, in two months, we're having an entire year's worth of eruptions. That's about a six fold increase, 600% increase in volcanic activity. Now, people argue over what's causing the increased volcanism, and, and, and they may be right. I mean, there's some loosely connected evidence suggesting that the cosmic rays and, and the sun can influence your magma chambers, but they have to be shallow magma chambers, and now uh, with all the intrusions going on all over the planet, uh, our magma chambers are filling that are at just four kilometers depth. But if you think a cosmic ray can travel through four kilometers of soil and somehow excite your magma, I just think that's fitting a square peg in a round hole. What, what is obvious is that we've had a huge and massive increase in the number of earthquakes. And when you have that many earthquakes, you really can disrupt the stability of your magma chambers, your, your lava domes. And so it's, it's possible that, that uh, once you start the volca volcanoes, then you increase seismicity even more. Uh, because volcanoes themselves are seismic. So now you have plate tectonics and volcano earthquakes and we were having all these sound waves and vibrations that are propagating through our magma chambers daily. So I'm wondering what role that plays. The other is the magnetic induction. Uh, when we have electrons streaming into our poles and through the core of our earth we could heat up the, heat up the core that way but this it's so hard to prove that so what do you do what do we do I mean we're, we're gonna just stand here and watch our oceans die and it's look such a helpless feeling but you really can protect your inlets and your bays and your tidal pools with shade how hard is shade? Shade is easy, you know, and we should have been making shade an industry 15 years ago. I, I, can you imagine um, a million floating umbrellas <laughs> in an in a inlet on inner tubes? Uh, I mean, there's a hundred different ways you can create shade, and the only way they seem to want to create shade is by spraying particulates in the atmosphere. So, 
so and the other thing is I think growing your own garden and stockpiling food is a great idea uh, when you see megatons of food dying and contaminated when you, you see actually what's happening to our food supply you would you would want to grow a garden you really would so I encourage you all to become garden happy individuals and of course storing water is always a sound idea not for just apocalyptic things but local flooding can destroy your, your local water so clean water is survival so until next time Keep your eyes open and your ears open.